Happy Thursday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Dell, to present our Macro Minute for Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. As always, we'll start with the executive summary from today's leadoff morning note. If you would like to review the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what specific changes you need to make in your portfolio, you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So today's key macro questions are, will rising energy prices derail the current risk on market regime? And will global central banks continue to support our bullish outlook for global liquidity? Our answers are, we do not believe rising energy prices are likely to derail the current risk on market regime. If they do, the correction is likely to be relatively short-lived. FYI, Brent crude oil has traded in a $70 to $90 per barrel range for the better part of two years. Ask your favorite AI chatbot how much other risk assets have appreciated over that time frame. When you're done with that, revise the prompt to ask it how much other risk assets have appreciated since this tragic war began with the heartbreaking, disgusting terrorist attack last October. You have to invest with your left brain, not your right brain, and then share the profits with families in need. Elsewhere, the latest commentary from UK and Japanese policymakers are marginally supportive of our Here Comes the Liquidity theme. Many of the world's major central banks are currently adjusting policy and or forward guidance in a dovish manner, with inflation well above target in their respective economies. This is the fourth turning style financial repression we've long been calling for in the U.S. gone global. Don't fight it, make money from it instead. The latest, uh, latest leading survey data from around the world are supportive of incremental decisions to financially repress investors into the world's sovereign debt markets. We expect the global economy to pick up steam in the coming months ahead uh, due to easy comps and China stimulus. If we're wrong in our sanguine outlook for global growth, the U.S. dollar would defy our expectations for continued declines and negatively impact the outlook for global liquidity. Transitioning to our 42 Macro Dashboard here, as always, we'll wrap up with a question from our community. Uh, this one says, what's wrong with oil and gas? It says, uh, hi, Darius. Why are we now throwing shade on opportunities in the oil and gas sector related to geopolitical events? Events like this create exits and interests to positions uh, in a bunch of healthy, uh, wealthy, divided juggernauts, while geopolitical events definitely don't bring Definitely don't bring the bread. Oh boy, do they bring the butter. <laughs> That's a great line. Uh, have a sweet weekend ahead, my friend. Uh, you have a sweet weekend ahead as, as well, my friend. So uh, I'll start by saying we are not throwing shade on opportunities in the oil and gas sector related to geopolitical events. Recall that in a Goldilocks market regime, cyclical should be leading the market higher. And so just be aware of that. We're just, what we're throwing shade on is the con the 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 the, the view that you can use geopolitical events with any accuracy and consistency to consistently generate superior investment performance. Uh, the answer on that is very clearly no. In fact, I would argue there's probably only one investor in the history of investing that has been consistently and accurately more than what they have been wrong on geopolitical geopolitics, and that's George Soros. And, and obviously, um, you know, Druckenmiller spun out of that. So uh, if your name isn't George Soros or George uh, Stan Druckenmiller, you're probably not going to be good uh, at generating consistently uh, good, uh, consistently superior risk-adjusted returns using geopolitics alone. The cycles that you need to be most concerned about as an investor, and again, it's not the only thing that matters, but these are the things that generally allow you to stay on the right side of market risk uh, if you write on your fundamental predictions, which are growth, their inflation, their policy, there's liquidity, there's profits, and then obviously the positioning cycle can act as an accelerant whenever one of those cycles inflects, uh, you know, that, that's kind of in a way that's counter to uh, the current positioning. So in our opinion, those are the kinds of things that you should be focused on on a consistent basis to generate uh, returns in markets. It's not to say geopolitics doesn't matter, but it kind of is. You know, I mean, I've been doing this since 2009, you know, spring of 2009, and the whole the conflict globally has only gone straight up into the right since then. The number, the frequency of conflicts and the intensity of conflicts has only gone straight up into the right again. And guess what? It's also gone straight up into the right. The stock market. Bitcoin, <laughs> risk assets. So again, if you're using geopolitics as a long-term uh, uh, guide for your investment decision-making, you're probably going to wind up with the wrong long-term performance uh, that uh, that's counter to your strategic investment objectives. And that's all we're uh, humbly trying to say. But obviously, you guys are all adults out there. Do whatever you want. Uh, uh, and then uh, I think that was it. So we'll wrap it up there. Darius Dell presenting our Macro Minute for Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. Best of luck out there. Everyone have a wonderful day. We'll catch you back here tomorrow for, guess what? Our monthly macro scouting report is going to be a fantastic presentation. I'm so super pumped to present that uh, to our uh, for, to our clients out here at 42 Macro. Uh, they, for those who may not be aware, our macro scouting report is our monthly deep dive presentation where we pull in all of our thoughts and, and, and update uh, our clients on our fundamental themes of revolving around growth, inflation, policy, liquidity, pro corporate profits. That's where we you know formulate and communicate and update our clients primarily on our fundamental views. And then we use our 
daily lead off morning notes in between those monthly macro scouting reports as a, you know, sort of, you know, live Bayesian inference process where child clients can peek in uh, into our, you know, sort of, you know, daily, you know, uh, updating of uh, daily, you know, um, reviewing of the data that can impact and change our, you know, conviction level or, or the th those themes outright. So um, super pumped about that, super pumped about the process that we built uh, that thousands of investors around the world are tapping into on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So uh, we're wrapping up there. Everyone have a wonderful day. We'll catch you back here tomorrow for MSR Day. Cheers.